subject tonight, there's more of a new thing. There's more of a new thing. Let's take a look at what we have. When you have the Christ, you have freedom from sin and sinning. Mm -hmm. That means you don't have an excuse to sin. I believe I got some sanctified folk. I have about three sanctified folk up in here that, are, that talk back to me. Hello, somebody. Uh, God. You, are, you have freedom from sin and sinning. You have love. There's love for the loveless. There's joy in sorrow. There's hope for tomorrow. There's provision for the needy. There's healing for the body and the mind. There's peace in the midst of and for the storm. There's strength for the weak. There is power for the powerless. Are you about to find yourself in here? There's wisdom for the simple. There's knowledge for the ignorant. There's guidance for the journey. Faith for the test. Deliverance from bondage. Comfort for pain. A friend for the lonely. Grace for the humble. Mercy for the offender. And much, much more. When you have the Christ. Well, Pastor, what does this have to do with God giving me a brand new wardrobe? Nothing. But, Pastor, what does this have to do with me... <laughs> Getting what I want. Thank you, Bishop. Nothing. So, 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 preacher, what does this have to do with me getting my little pettiness solved and fixed, or me getting my stuff fixed while I do what I want to do? Nothing. Because there is no way you can have the Christ and stay the same. I'll say it again. There is no way you can have the Christ living on the inside and stay the same. He is going to challenge you to change everything in your life. I'm talking about the Christ. In this new year coming in, you've got to understand the only way you're going to have total victory is you wrap yourself around the reality of Jesus the Christ. Live for him and live for him only. I heard him say, there's no good thing that I will withhold from them that walk up right but before me. Oh, bless his name. If you, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Bishop's the one that said everything's going to be fine in 2009. For those of us who have the Christ, everything is going to be fine. Even while I'm bawling my eyes out. Even when there's sorrow in my house. Even when things are taken away from me. Even when I'm challenged within an inch of my life. Everything is fine because Jesus, the Christ, is on the throne of my heart. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's the only way things can be fine. How in the world can you smile while people are talking about you? How can you go on? How can you get up in the morning when things look so bad? How can you go put one foot in front of the other when it seems like every time you take two steps forward, you take five steps back, but you keep on getting up? It's because of the Christ which is God's new thing. The Christ. Not a Cadillac, but the Christ. Not money in the bank, but the Christ is God's new thing. Joy to the world. You heard it? The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and in heaven and nature sing. Hallelujah. Because he is the Christ, the anointed one. Oh, bless his name. 
So when we understand that Christ is God's new thing, I don't know what you were looking for, but if you, were, if you put trust in anything else in 2009, you will be grossly disappointed. Because he's already anointed for 2009. Oh, come on. Come on, tell somebody. Wake somebody up on your row and tell them God is already in 2009 ahead of us. He's already worked it out ahead of us. He's already fixed it ahead of us. He's already gone before us. That's why, that's why I can boldly and gladly stand here and say that there's more of a new thing coming. I said there's more of a new thing coming. Now, if I were to break, my Lord, the law of preaching and get begin to go and tell you there's more money coming, y'all would be up on your feet. But I'm here to tell you everything you need, there's more coming. If he made a way in 52, he's going to make a way in 2009. If he brought you out last year, he's going to bring you out. There's more. Somebody said there's more. Of God's new thing. There's more of God's new thing. Come on, clap your hands and praise God for his new thing. It's time we get excited about God's new thing. He said, I'm going to do a new thing in you. Hallelujah. It's going to spring forth. You're going to see it when it happens. And every, all flesh saw when Jesus was born. Hallelujah. Jesus is God's new thing. Hallelujah. I hate to disappoint you. Hate, I'm sorry I'm not prophesying stocks and bonds. And all of this other stuff. Last point. There's more to come of the new thing for those who wait on and love God. Let me say that again. There's more to come of the new thing, God's new thing, for those who wait on and love God. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's take a look at these two passages of Scripture very carefully in my closing. Isaiah 64 and 4 says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, Oh God, besides thee, what he hath prepared for them that waiteth for him. Let's read it again. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, Lord have mercy, nor perceived by the ear. Neither hath the eye seen, O God, besides thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Them that wait on the law. I know you're in a hurry to get out of debt, but you got to wait. On God. I know the pain's getting a little difficult and the situations are getting a little rough in the house, but you got to wait on God. 
I know Shaquita got one yesterday, and it seems like you've been two years waiting on yours. And if you is Shaquita in here, God bless you. Hallelujah. But, but you, you're two years waiting on yours, but you've got to understand that you've got to wait. Now, let me help you out. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. Let's go. First Corinthians.